page 74b, or towards the bottom. We're holding by Hakashi Ramatu, which is tying and untying. Matu means to untie. So these are two malachas. The Gemara asks right away, Kshira be Mishkan Hecha Havoi. Where was their tying in the Mishkan? What tying did they do in the construction? It was built out of, um, you know, acacia wood and silver sockets and this. What exactly was tied? So Amar Ravash can question be say this oilim. Ravash says that there were pegs um, that were holding up the tent. The oilim here refers to the ureus, the coverings of the Mishkan, that they would tie them down to pegs. I guess it would, you know, to keep them uh, in place. The Gemara asks, who kaisha manas lahatiru? Those coverings that were used for the um, were used for the for the roof of the Mishkan, that was not a permanent knot. They because they would take them down when they traveled. I was expecting the Gemara here to answer that because they traveled al pi Hashem, that's considered permanent. Uh, we did that once before. The Gemara doesn't answer that. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, no, what was that? Uh, we said Al Pi Hashem Yachanu. Al Pi Hashem Somehow that told us that made it that it was considered. Um, oh, it had to do with building in the same place. Say someone else live nice in the same place was the malacha, or something. Okay. Anyway, whatever the case is, the Gemara over here answers. Okay, the weavers, um, they're weaving the cloth that's used as the coverings. If a strand snaps in the, in the weaving process, so they tie in a new one. So they make a knot. So Amalei Rabbit rats to Kaiser. Yeah, it's a good answer, but it only answers half the question. Mater Mayakala Mamer, when do they untie? So this is Rava talking to Abaya. Says Vikitema, maybe you can say like this. The Misramale Tre Chute Kitri Bahadi Adadi Sharihad Bakatehad. What does the Bach do to this? Tre Kitri takes out the chute. If you have two knots that are right next to each other, so remember when you're weaving, so you have them lined up, the warp in the weft. So if what comes out is, let's say the strand that's going through, when it comes back, it snaps, it, it, it snapped on the way there and then it snaps on the way back. So you have two knots. It's very possible that both knots are right in the, next to each other. So there's a little bit of a bulge. That wouldn't be good for the material. So maybe what you do over there is you untie one, you just leave it in place, I guess. And, um, you untie one just so you should, it shouldn't have a double bulge because of two knots that are adjacent. So the Gemara says, It's a lot of abbreviations there. Um, you wouldn't do this for a cloth, for a, 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 human, a human king. This is the way you make cloth for Hashem, that you leave one of them loose. They needed to get the dye that was the purple wool, which came from this, uh, the snail, the chilozen. Now, uh, they would use a net. Now, the nets, they could open them up and make them smaller, make them larger. And nets were made from a bunch of knots. So they would untie and tie the nets, depending on the size that they needed, in order to do this. So we're talking about the the, how do they get the materials that they, and, the, and the, the colors that they needed for the Mishkan, this came through uh, tying and untying. Here Rashi tells us the Chilazan, that it's like a small fish and it comes up once in 70 years. Okay. Someone um, made a video about the chilas, and I, there was an agenda. Yeah, I forget what it was promoting, but um, the interesting part of it was that possibly what he said—the reason why we lost the the, the chilasen was because this was considered a royal color, 
and they were rules in uh, in in Rome and, and possibly other places that um, no one was allowed to use this color but the royalty, and so that stopped the um, the uh, the business. There was another business one. They 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 quoted Justinian's um, laws to to for that somewhere in Justinian's things. Okay. Hatayfer state firis. So when sews two stitches, that's a malacha. Now I think the Gemara is understanding two stitches. That means that uh, he goes into the cloth, right? Uh, into the cloth, and then he goes out. I don't know if it means double. Whatever the case is, um, the Gemara asks right away. Well, like Kaima, that's not going to hold. That's not a real malacha if it's not going to hold. So the Gemara answers, I'm a rabba barbachan, I'm rabbi yechan, I'm You're going to need to tie it on both ends also. Um, so you'll be chayev because of kosher, but you also chayev, I guess, because of the stitch. So it's interesting that you have a malachi here that's dependent. It's only going to work. Well, I guess a lot of stitches will hold. But you'll be chayev for two stitches if there's a knot at the end as well. Okay, hakarei al menas litfar. If someone tears in order to sew, the Gemara asks, kriya b'mishkan mihavi, was this part of the process of building the mishkan, that you had to tear cloth? So, Rabba v'rabzeira, damri tavayu, Rabba and Rabzeira, we're familiar with them. They were friends. They said, they both said, shekin yuria, we're on top of ayin hay, shekin yuria, shenafu badarna, karimba. This is uh, the cloth, the, the tapestries, that the, the darna is either a worm or a moth that made a hole in it. Now, the hole that it makes is a round hole. So what you want to do is you want to sew it, sew up that hole. But if you pinch it, then it's going to make a crease in the cloth. So you need to cut it and then put it together. Then you're able to make it with a, that it should be an, a clean seam uh, without, the, without the, the crease in it. So here we say, here you have to tear in the part, as part of the construction of the Mishkan. Okay. Amar... Rav Zutra Bartuvia Amarav. Rav Zutra Bartuvia says the name of Rav. We're going to have three halachas here. Um, one of them is relevant for Hilchah Shabbos. The others are not. He asked, how does this come in? Well, he said it in the name of Rav. So they came together. Maybe he even said them together. So that's why we have it all, all in one. Uh, so it goes like this. Hamitea chut shel tir b'shabbos chayv chatas. Two, two pieces of cloth that are sewn together. However, they're being separated. So when you pull it, um, it comes tight. So you're pulling a, a, a stitch, and the, actually just pulling that stitch tightens the, um, the connection between these two cloths. So that's considered tighter because you're, you're tightening it by just pulling it. That little act of tightening the, the string. Okay, that's the first halacha. The next thing is, If someone learns from a magush, even one thing, he's chayiv misa. Now, we're going to see in a minute uh, what a magush is, but um, um, apparently it's some sort of Persian priest. Now, if someone knows how to calculate the seasons and the planets, the uh, uh, astronomy, if he knows how to do that and he doesn't, so two, two possibilities. Either means that you're not allowed to talk with him, or it means he's not let us say over halachas in his name. An explanation for the second one would be that 
he's not talking about the greatness of Hashem. So you're not allowed to speak about his greatness. The greatness of Hashem is these calculations. It could be the, um, just the actual way that it uh, moves around. It could be the calculations, the intercalculations of the sun and the moon. And it even could be the astrology of it. Um, it could be also that that we wanted to remove the superstitions of it. That would be the opposite of this. We wanted to say that it's it all is not, it's charted out already, and don't 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 turn it into some superstitious uh, thing. It's it works with mathematics. So okay, whatever the case is. Was there a mitzvah associated for a person who's not on the base in a goggle to calculate? It's seems, we're going to see. We're going to see soon. It seems that anyone that's able to is obligated to. It's funny. There was there's a book. I forget who put it out. I don't know. Art Scroll or Feldheim. One of the, and it um, it has in. It's called the Jewish calendar. I think the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish calendar. In the back, on the last page of this book, it describes the whole calendar. Oh, it was made by Reb David Feinstein. I don't know if it's the Reb David Feinstein or a different one. But um, uh, in the back, it tells you how to make a calendar with the Mylod, you know, it tells you the Mylod and all of that on an Excel, um, Excel spreadsheet. It says, wow, you can do this. <laughs> Anyone that knows how to do this is obligated to do it. I can do it. I can type it in. We have to take it off there. Okay. Go take it to the couch. Just careful when you walk. Careful. Careful. One second. Yeah, this one. I think back in, back in the day, everybody, especially if you want to travel at night, had to know oh. the rules for sure. Anybody right. travel, everybody, anybody travel in the ocean had to know when the moon was going to be out, when the high tides were going to be out. Uh -huh. that was, I think that was. I think that everybody back in the day had to know the stuff. Right. Do you want to test one? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. One second. <laughs> My hands fell there. Give me a second. What can I do for you? Water? Okay. One second. <clears throat> Avram, Avram you're, you're right that people used to be capable astronomers. It had to be. But it's another thing to elevate it to the level to say, if you don't do this, you can't teach a word of Torah to anyone. But it, okay, so somebody lives in the city and he doesn't need to do it, and he doesn't the travel. Point, the, the point is that back then, just like, just like in the times of the base of Migdash, everybody was comfortable with the laws of Tumantara. Back in the day, everybody was comfortable with the laws of, of the astronomy. So if you were not like everybody else, then you don't deserve to have a normal job. To you, it sounds third world because no one today knows it, but back then, everybody knew it. Yeah. And after and after Corona, everybody understands the laws of Tumantara now. Yeah. <laughs> you stand six feet away from everybody. You don't touch what he touched. You make sure to be careful. That's right. That's right. Okay, uh, especially under the same roof. Uh, it says Magushta. The Gemara says Rav Shmuel. It's actually a machlekes between Rav and Shmuel. What is the, the Magush? What is this muggish? What is the what is the issue with the, these priests that you're not allowed to learn from them? Chadam <laughs> one says harshi. Harshi means that it's uh, witchcraft. It's that, that's that's the issue. And the other one says gedufi. The other one says 
that it's Megadif. It, they, um, it's Megadif, it's, uh, it's a blasphemy. They, they, um, they worship idols, so therefore it's blasphemous to God. They're also um, like missionaries, they proselytize, so you shouldn't be learning from them. And the Gemara says, to st- it's a Machlick's Rav and Shmuel, what the issue is with these people. So the Gemara says, to stayim the Rav Damar Gedufi. Let us prove that Rav is the one that says that they're the blasphemous ones, that the issue is that they're blasphemous. Damar Rav Zutra Bartuvia Amar Rav, because we just had the statement. Mar Rav Zutra Bartuvia says, name of Rav, Halei Medav Rechem Magosh Chayiv Misa. If you learn from them, you're Chayiv Misa. And these al Kharshi, if you say that the issue with them is witchcraft, Haksiv Lesilmadlasis, it says you should not learn the ways of the nations to perform it. But you're allowed to learn in order to paskin. So how could you say that you're not allowed to learn from them? You are allowed to learn from them, you're just not allowed to learn in order to perform. So it must be that the issue is that they're blasphemous, not the. Uh... I don't know how to do more. I don't know. I don't know how to do more. I want that one. How about that? I'm gonna do this. How about that one? Right? Okay. Um, to stay and let it be settled. Um, Rab Shimon ben Pazi, Um, Rab Shua ben Levi, Mishum Bar Kapara. Rab Shua ben Levi says, Name of Bar Kapara, Kola Yedel Hashi, but Kuvus and Mazolus Venachesha. Anyone that's able to make these calculations. Give me one second. Let me take them. When did the rabbi's son have his upshurin? Is that the same kid with the Lad long hair? Lad Balmer. What? Lad Balmer. Lad Balmer. Oh. He looks so different, you know. I forgot to um I was I was supposed to send you the invitation, Dr. Stein. I'm sorry, I forgot to. <laughs> That's why I ended up asking the question. I'm joking. Oh. But you always send out announcements and invitations, so it sounded legit. That's, that's why I said it. By the way, I have an extra chita uh, set in my house if anyone needs. So uh, let me know and I'll put it in my mailbox. I think Yitz gave it to me. Which For which week? For now, this whole new coming set that just started for four weeks, chitas. The chayena. That's what I meant. Hadi, I have it. I have it. Okay. Sorry. So he says, anyone that knows how to do this and he doesn't do it, Allah v'kasavayma. Regarding him, the pasuk says, "Vespayel Hashem le'yabitu." The actions of Hashem, he doesn't look. He doesn't look at these wonders of Hashem. I might see other in the work of his hands. He doesn't see. So there's an obligation for a person that knows how to make the calculations to be involved in that and to do it. Amr Rab Shmuel Bar Nachmani, Amr Rab Yechanan. 
Uh, Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmeni says the name of Reb Yechon, and it's usually Reb Yechon, and on the side it actually corrects it. Minayin she mitzvah ladam lachashiv tkufus mazalos. How do you know there's actually a mitzvah to do these calculations? Shenema rushmartim vasiyusim. You should guard and you should do ki chachmascham and binascham leinu amim. Sometimes rushmartim means you should learn. Um, you should learn, let's say, and you should do because this is the wisdom, your wisdom, and your understanding in the eyes of the nations. Which wisdom and understanding is to the eyes of the nations? This is doing these calculations. You know, you know, in Rashi's comment on the Pasuk and the Koma, she says, there's none of this. What does he say? He just says uh, how important it is. I, it, it, it's a general, I, I, I think I recall it was just a general comment. I would have remembered. Study Torah, I think it says. Yeah, I would have remembered if he'd said uh-huh. it had something to do with the Mazalos. Uh-huh. Um, Rashi comments over here, Leni Amin, has to, that it has to do with astrology, that you see if the year is going to be a lot of rain or it's going to be this and that. Which is, Surprising. And it's like the Mazalus. Last mention of Perkev is Perkimel. Right? It says that the, the smart person is one who knows the Mazalus. Uh-huh. Right? Does it say Parperis Lachachma? Exactly. Uh-huh. Uh huh. We had uh, it comes to mind the Zakuta, Avram Zakuta was. What does uh, that mean? There, there was a person that he made uh, charts of different things, and um, apparently Columbus used his charts. Okay. So Avram Zakuta was his name. He wrote a Sefer. A sefer Ayuchsin was his uh, was his Sefer. And he also had um, these charts, maps for uh, for sailors and stuff. Okay, Hatsadsvi, um, someone that hunts, hunts a deer. So that's one of the malachas. Oh, yeah, Albert Einstein. Okay, Tanur uh, Abanan, start in the brayza. Hatsad chilaza, and someone that hunts a chilaza is that snail. Vahapaitsai. Paitzi is he squishes he squishes it he squishes it because he's taking the um, the blood out to use it for uh, for the ink for the dye to, to color color the the wool. In chayiv alachas, he's only chayiv one. He's not chayiv for squishing it. He's only chayiv for hunting for catching it capturing. Rabbi Yehuda Mechayiv Shtaim. Rabbi Yehuda says it's chayiv two. What are the two? The two is taking. One is catching, trapping, and the other one is, Rabbi Yudah holds, is, is mefarek. Remember we said before, milking a, an animal, we mentioned that. Or we said taking the dates off the tree also is mefarek. So taking something that's inside, that's held inside, you're taking it out. Here you have the blood that's inside, you're taking it out, that's mefarek. So here Rabbi Yehuda Oimer, p'tziya b'chlal disha, that squishing this... Um, Snail is considered disha, which is threshing, which that's mefarek, which that's uh, taking out what's good from, from the husk. Amrulai ain't p'tziya b'chal disha. They said, no, it's not. Um, it's not considered disha, threshing. Amar Rava. Rava says, my time at the Rabbanon. What's the reason for the Tanakhama that argues with Rabbi Yehuda regarding if taking the, the uh, ink, taking the dye out of this is considered threshing, because Avri, because the Rabbanon hold, ain't disha l'gdule karka. So remember, we had this before. Threshing is only by things that grow from the ground. Okay. So this doesn't grow from the ground. That was Tyson's discussion before. You can say maybe there's a difference between animals versus snails. Maybe what eats, the animals actually eat from the ground. That could be considered that it grows from the ground. Snails, they're in the water. They don't eat from the ground, but whatever the case is, for snail, snails are for sure not considered gedulikarka, and um, and that's why the rabbis hold that there's no threshing or um, pitzia squishing. 
The Gemara asks the question, but what about the obvious? What about by killing it? One of the malachas was sheichet. You can't kill it in Shabbos. You're squishing it. We're not talking about it. It was dead already. You're squishing it after it was dead. That's, doesn't, that, that didn't come into the equation here. Rav Amar, Rav says, even if you're squishing it while it's alive, but it's on tilis neshama, he doesn't intend to kill it. He doesn't intend for the for that action. He doesn't want to kill it. Gemara asks, one second. We know there's a machlekes between Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Shimon regarding davar miskaven. You don't intend to do this malacha. So Rabbi Huda holds its chayv and Rabbi Shimon holds pater. If you, don't, if you didn't intend for that malacha, you opened up the refrigerator to get some food and the light turned on. You did not intend to turn on the light. That wasn't your intention. It happens to be that that's what happens. So Abai and Rava say that if it's um, definite, if it's in, in, inevitable, that that's what's going to happen, so then you can't tell me that you didn't intend that. So here, th- th- their expression is psikresh v'layamas. Expression is if someone says, I want the head of a chicken for, for my son, uh, my child to play with, like a, as a puppet or whatever, a little uh, doll, the head is going to use it. I didn't intend to kill it. I just, uh, what do you know? It died. So um, that's, it, that's inevitable. It's psikresh, you remove the head v'layamas and it's not going to die. Don't tell me that that wasn't your kavana. So over here, we're saying that he's killing the snail. He doesn't want it to die. He's squ- squishing it. He doesn't want it to die. So, so therefore, he's potter. So one second, but Abai and Rava both say, you're not potter if you kill it and claim you didn't want it to die. So the Gemara answers, Shani Hacha, the Kama de Ispe Neshama, Tfei I don't know if he's doing a... Um, Something called um, if and uh, what's it called Nichole. Something the it, 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 he he doesn't whatever the he doesn't want it to die because the fresh blood is more clear than if it comes from a dead uh, dead chilazin. So therefore, he's actually trying to keep it alive. So we were thinking that, oh, it's automatically going to die. No, he's actually intending to keep it alive and just to take out a little bit of blood. The kamadis bin shama tfei nichale, ki heche de leitzel tzivei, so that the dye, the dye, the ink, uh, the ink should, um, should be clearer and it shouldn't die. And it shouldn't, uh, the chilazan shouldn't die, but the ink should die. Okay. Um, This, it could be it's a discussion of psikresha delay nichalai. That's a discussion here. If he doesn't want it to happen, if he doesn't want it to happen, um, it's not what his, then, then there's an exemption. The question is, in those cases, if it's mutter, if it's mutter or if it's just not chayev. Okay. We're up to Vashaychtai. This is a very interesting Gemara. It says, Vashaychtai, it's quoting the Mishnah. Shaychet Mishum Mai Chayev. Why is Shaychet Chayev? It's a funny question. It's what do you mean? It's one of the Malachas. Ravam Mishum Tseveya. Rav says because it's coloring. Shmuel Amishim Natil's Neshama because it's it's killing. Very strange Gemara. Um, I, 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 Tseveya was a different Malacha, right? 
you're not allowed to die, uh, die things on Shabbos. You're also not allowed to shech. You're telling me that the all of shechting is just because of is 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 because you're coloring when the blood comes out. It's coloring. So Shmuel is clear. Mishum tilas neshama. Rav is a little interesting. He says that issue of shechet is because of tzivaya. Gemara says mishum tzivaya in mishum tilas neshama lai. What are you telling me? That the whole issue of shechet is just because of coloring. It's not because of killing. Okay, we have a teretz. It's also because of coloring. You know, as according to Rav, you're high of two things when you shech. That's what the Gemara means. Shall us what's the Havamina? Okay, we're on the top of Ayin Hayam at Beis. Amar Rav. Rav says, Milsa da Amri, Ema ba Milsa, the Leilesi Dari basrei v'lechacho alay. Uh, what I'd said, I want to explain so that future generations don't come and laugh at me. So it goes like this. When he's coloring it, what does he want? What does he mean? He's shechting an animal and he wants to color the animal. What does he want with the blood? The blood's going to color the animal. He says, He wants the area around the shechita to be uh, colored by the blood. If it looks bloody, then people will come and say, oh, this is a fresh piece of meat. So that he has benefit from. So that's why he's chayev, because of that coloring. It looks like a fresh piece of meat. It has the, the, the fresh blood on it. So that's part of uh, what he wants. So he's chayev because of shechting and also because of coloring. Now we say There was in the tanning process, making the leather or the parchment. So there was salting it and tanning it. The Gemara says the salting it is part of the tanning. Whatever other uh, chemicals they use on it, salt is one of them. You're not going to divide this up and saying the salting is one. Those other can I don't know whatever acids they, they put on it. Uh, that's all, that's also it's all the same uh, process. So Rabbi Yechon of Reish Lakish, the Amr Tavayo, Apik Chad Minay of Ayel Sirtet, unbelievable. We gave you a list in the Mishnah. We gave you thirty nine Malachas. You should know it's not ac- it's not accurate. You have to take one of them out. Which one do you take out? Doesn't tell me. <laughs> Either Malchay or Ma'abda. You take one of them out. Probably you take out Malchay uh, because Ma'abed is more inclusive. Um, Take out the and you have to put in sirtut. Now sirtut, you'd be higher for sirtut for making lines, but here it's making lines to know where to cut it. It would make lines. Yeah, something like that. Um, I don't know how they do sirtut by uh, stam, but by the get they do it the opposite way. They, the sirtut. The, the lines are protruding up. I think by stem, the lines are protruding in. Um, they have is a... Is now one of the Lamitas Malachas? Sirtut would be a, one of the Malachas, yeah. That's so what comes out. It was changed at, at this point? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it didn't, didn't redo the Mishnah, but... Um, but I'm saying, but when they Sirtut don't... became an Av now. So when you go and find Sfarim that have the Lamatis Malachas, Sirtus is one of them? Oh, that's a good Mal- question. And Mal- 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 that's a good question. That's a good question. I have to look in the Rambam. Like, yeah, like- what the Rambam quotes. Um, um, I don't know if that's the right one. Um, 636. Perkirala, Falachi Yad Zion. Um... As the, as the Lamed. Yeah, let's take a look if I can, if it, this has the Rambam in it. No. I'd have to look, I have to look it up in the Rambam. But um, that's, a, that's a good question. Okay. It just goes to show you that, um, you know, when Rebbe wrote the Mishnah, he didn't write it a hundred percent edited. He edited it, but he left a little bit of Teresh Balpeh in here. 
where we still need to, um, if you're able to access the Ramam, it's Perakir Aleph. Uh, no, actually, Sirtut is Perakir Aleph, but I, I'm not sure where the where his list of Malachas is. Amar Rabba Baravuna, Haiman the Malach Bistra, Chayiv Mishim Abed. Someone that salts meat is Chayiv because of tanning. Rava Amar, this is Rabba Baravuna. Rava says, no, ain't Ibad Baichlin. There's no tanning by food. You're, you're, you're uh, flavoring it. Taisvis over here says, by the way, there's no heter here to do pickling, to, to salt food. That's, that's a, a separate is, uh, issue. It's an iser midrabanan. Even on Yamtiv, he writes. Even on Yamtiv, it's also to pickle. Um, uh, from Nassim, you had a discussion about that once with uh, Savici, I think. Um, but it's not considered tanning. According to Rava, that looks like the Allah. Amar Abashi, Abafilu Rabba Baravua, la Yamar Allah, the Kaboy, la Lorcha. Even Rabba Baravua didn't mean that adding salt into food, or um, let's say just salting it for, um, I don't know, to roast it, and, uh, a little bit of salt. Aval the base, but salting it for the, it's only if you're salting it to preserve it. But salting it for the house, it's a person not going to turn his food into, into wood. So that's not considered when if he's salting for his house, tanning is taking, um, taking a piece of leather that should be should rot. It's a skin of an animal, it should rot, but you 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 treat it chemically so that it turns into wood as if it's wood, and it doesn't rot, it can last. You can put a piece of leather on your foot, and it doesn't, it doesn't smell, or, you know, it turns it into wood. No one's going to do that to food. Food is just, you're, you're, you're uh, flavoring it or something. So if you're salting the meat in a way that it's going to preserve it, that it's going to be for the road, so then Rabbi Baravuna says that that's considered tanning. Okay. Now it says, This is smoothing out. It was like taking the little hairs off the, the parchment and cutting it. Several interpretations here what this means. Rashi says that you have pillars, and in between the pillars, Maybe the dirt sort of like gets like a like a groove, like a, or maybe it gets um, a pile. And you with your foot, or does it say with your foot? No, I don't know how I got that. Um, he smooths it out the area between two pillars. He makes it flat, so that's memachik. Rashi says it's like windows that are but it's on the floor. You're making it smooth. Other interpretations here, Taisva says that you're rubbing um, the leather, Taisva's quotes are being a Hanano, that you're rubbing the leather that's on these pillars to make it smooth. I don't know if you're rubbing the leather against the pillars or maybe the, the leather is tied between, like Dr. Stein had, it was tied up you know, in this picture. Um, it's tied to a frame and then you rub it over there to smooth it out. That's how they make the, they tan it. Um, Tysus doesn't like Rashi's Pshat. He says, So this is smoothing. Whatever the case is, this is smoothing. Either it's the floor or it's the pillars, possibly, or it's the leather. Amar Abhiya Baraba. Abhiya Baraba says, Gimel Dvarim Sachli Ravashi Mishmid Rabbi Shua Ben Levi. Ravashi, or Ravasi probably, told me three things in the name of Rabbi Shua Ben Levi. Abhiya Baraba is a student of Rabbi Yechanan. So Ravasi would be the one that was there by Rabbi Yechanan. And he said in the name of Rabbi Shua Ben Levi, one is Hamagara Rashi Klintzis B'Shabbos Chai Mishim Machatach. Uh, the top of Kleinsis are some sort of posts. 
maybe maybe they're poles or something. Now you want them to be even. So you smooth them out to make them even. That's considered mechatech because you're making it to a certain size. Cutting. Mechatech is cutting. You're cutting it to a certain size. If someone has a bandage that has an ointment on it, and you smooth that out, the ointment on the bandage, so that's memachik, that's making something smooth. That's the problem. So that's the second thing that Rabbi Shobhan Levi said. Two, two halachas so far. Mechatech is cutting the posts to size, or smoothing them to size. Here it's smoothing a bandage, the ointment on a bandage. And v'hamesatis es evan b'shab b'shay mishamake b'patish. Someone chisels a stone on Shabbos, that's considered Makkah B'patish. So, I guess, why is that Makkah B'patish? I guess because the, all the big work was taking it off the quarry and, you know, and taking that. Now you have just to chisel it out. That's Makkah B'patish. Amar Shimon ben Kisma. It's probably Reb Shimon ben Barbisna. Amar Reb Shimon ben Lakish. Atzar Tzura B'keli. Someone makes a, a design on a, on a, probably an earthenware vessel, and uh, which is the last part of the vessel. You probably make it into a vessel, and then you probably decorate it. It's someone that blows, does glass blowing. So that's the last part of the jobs for these, either the, the, the decoration on the vessel or the blowing of the glass. Which is interesting. I would think there would be a few little ends left on the glass that you need to crack off um, when when they blow it. But apparently, this is it. Blowing it is uh, is is the last part. I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Haiman de shakel akufi miglimi chay mishemak vepatish. If someone has threads that are in his clothing that don't belong there, and he takes them out. Now it could be, it could be that you know how like on wool it gets um, fuzzy. There's like little uh, balls of fuzz that like go on that, and he takes them off. So that's that's um, the last. Well, Makabapatish, he's fixing it. Ahani mili the kapitalai. That's only if these things bother him. They don't bother him. Then, then that's not a, that's not a, the malach of makav patish. I noticed in I have this commentary here that we mentioned before sirtut. They quote the benish chai uh, saying that. By the way, the sirtut I've been looking at Wikipedia. Sirtut is one of them, and they took they they took the um, the mal. Uh huh. Uh huh. Never knew that. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So. Um, there may be some more, some more coming. Um, the uh, we had some others before. Okay, uh, so the, the Benish Chai says that if someone talks in front of a um, recording device, I don't know what they had back then records or no it was much much before it was the early 1900s so that's misartit because it's writing with lines and uh, the Ravavad Yosef says that the line is the lines are being made anyway it's, it's it's moving the whole time there's a line the question is what the lines are doing um, so he's, he doesn't uh, he doesn't accept that question is if, if there is a recording device if you're allowed to talk and, and what would the malacha be? Would it be kaisev? No, it's not a letter. But maybe misartit is more, is more close to that. It's interesting. Rabbi, okay. yeah. just a question. Makabapatish, is that always a negative connotation when using the malacha? Yeah, it's always a malacha. Always. The work, it's, it's a work on Shabbos. Okay, the, the final blow of the work. Right. Okay, because I'm thinking of a bris is technically a makkah b'patish 
because it's the final job on the pro, but it's positive, and I can't think of another one. But no, we never use no. that term. So, so all of these works are positive. Just you're not allowed to do positive work. You're not allowed to do any constructive work on Shabbos. Right. right. All of these things are, are beneficial. It's just on Shabbos, we don't do uh, constructive work. Except for a bris. Yeah, except for something that would override Shabbos, like a bris. Okay. Now we're up to Vakesh of Shtei So he writes two letters. Tanur Abanan. He's taught in a brisa. Kosov Vaisachas Kedayla. If someone writes one large letter, it's so large that it could have been two letters. So he's pater, because he only wrote one. The malach is writing two. He made a big letter, but it's, uh, they say, Kiddush Levan Isis. He made uh, a big letter. Apparently the Siddur was printed, uh, so that when you go outside in the dark, the Kiddush Levan should be, have a larger print. So, um, so he wrote the large letter, he's pater. But look at this. Let's say he erased one large letter. Erasing has to be the same like writing. The only thing is, is that he erased the large letter. In that space, you could write two small letters. So what is Meichek? Meichek is Almanas Lichtev. You erased in order to write. And you, here you can write two letters. So he's Chayev. Interesting. He erased one letter and he's Chayev. He writes one letter, he's Pater. Here it comes out, you have a stringency of erasing over writing. Someone that builds or destroys, extinguishes or ignites, and makabe patish. Rabbe and Rabzir both say, this is the second time we have them today. Um, anything that's the end of the work is considered makabe patish. That's the rule. We've been quoting that the whole time, but here, this is where it says it. Elu avis malacha is these are the fathers of malacha, the primary malachas. What does it mean, Elu? These are Elu la fuke midrabe lezer the mechayev halatolda b'makamav. You see, we gave a list. Um, we explained. Rabbi Yechanan told us why do we have this list. Why do we have the, the, the number uh, on the list? He said to tell you that this is the amount of malachas, this is the amount of chatois that a person would be high of maximum. And now I see the top of that uh, table, malacha table. Uh-huh. So, okay. So that's the maximum amount of malachas. Why is it the maximum amount of malachas? Because if you do a bunch of malachas together, only different category, each category gets its own chatas. If you do an av and a tolda together, that's only one. But Rabbi Eliezer holds that each tolda gets its own chatas. So according to Rabbi Eliezer, we, the number is, is insignificant because you have many chatas, you know, just for, um, what was our example over there? Uh, if someone plants and uh, sows and cuts the, the and, and prunes and uh, grafts and uh, layers, we said that's all one, one malacha. Couldn't you believe that was five malachas? That's five chatois. So the, 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 how many chatois a person could bring on, on the Shabbos with one forgetting, couldn't you believe is many, much more than 39. So this is what we're coming to exclude, the opinion of Rabbi Lezer. That's why we give you that number. Chaser Achas, it's 40 minus 1. La Fukim de Rabbi Yehuda. This is coming to exclude the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. The Tanya was taught in a Braiser, Rabbi Yehuda Moisif. Rabbi Yehuda adds some more malachas here. What does he add? That's a Shevet Vamedaktik. Shevet is when you're, you see, when you set up the loom. So the warp threads get tied around uh, the pole at the end. There's two poles, you, you, they tie them around. It's very possible that they, one could go over the other one when you 
you have it so many times wrapped around, you need to straighten them out. You have to put probably something through it to make sure that it doesn't get um, tangled. That one would wrap, get wrapped over the other one. They, these are long threads that go across the whole loom. So you have to keep separating them. Um, so that's shave it. could be only when you set it up, you have to separate it. But that's shave it, is separating them. And midactic is when you're putting the weft through, so you, have, you pull it tight. Sometimes you pull it too tight. So what you do is you have to bang it to loosen it up. So that's midactic. The banging it to loosen it up, um, or it's to make it properly, it should be pulled at different uh, strengths. So otherwise your material is going to be crooked or, uh, or uneven. So that's midactic. So Rabbi Yudha adds, those are two malachas here, straightening out the threads of the warp and making the tightness of the weft uh, even. So Amalai, they responded to Rabbi Yehuda, Shevet areya b'chalal mesach. Shevet, that's, look, that's how you set up the loom. That is mesach. It's another detail of it, but yet that's part of the, the setting up of the loom. And medaktik areya b'chalal oirik. Medaktik, making it that it's not too, uh, that the, it's not pulled too tight, or that, uh, that, the, that the weaving is done evenly, that's weaving. It's not a separate malacha, that's the way you weave. So that's part of weaving. Doesn't get its own category. Okay, the Mishnah says, We had this quoted because we started off the parak with Klal Gadol, Lamra B'Shabbos. And then we said, Why is it so to say Klal Gadol? So one of the, the suggestions was, Well, because there's another Klal that it says later. That's why it's called Klal Gadol. And then we asked from other places that we also have some similar thing. But uh, w- th- that's when we quoted this Mishnah. And the Mishnah says like this There's another rule that was stated regarding Shabbos. Anything that's suited to be stored or to be collected and saved. Uh, and you carry this on Shabbos, chayv chatas. I love. You chayv chatas for that amount. As if it's a, the amount, you know, let's say um, uh, you're pouring something from one container to another, a little bit spills on the side. Sometimes you'll collect those pieces and put them back in. Sometimes you say, oh, there's just little pieces. You leave them out, you sweep them up. So anything that's a significant amount that you would collect and put aside, if you carry that amount, then you're going to be, then you're going to be chayev. Anything that's not suited to be put, a, put aside in storage, then you don't. And you carry that. The only person that's going to be chayev is someone that's so particular about it. For him, he himself is going to be chayev. But anyone else, that's not the amount that makes a person chayev. Uh, we said it was usually carrying, we said, was a gregoris, the size of a... But there may be differences for different uh, types of things. Uh, as we'll see in the next Mishnah. What is it coming to exclude? It says anything that's suited to be uh, saved, to be put aside. Who's it excluding? Rav Papa says it's coming to exclude menstrual blood. Wood from an asherah tree. Asherah tree is a tree that's worshipped. Um, apparently people thought this tree... Uh, was the god that gave uh, produce or something, uh, fruits, and they would worship it. So the wood from this is forbidden to have any benefit from, so it obviously can't be saved. The says, man dam or dam nida. The one that says dam nida is not saved. So kosh kenat for sure, wood from this tree that's forbidden is for sure not saved. It's not uh, collected and put aside. Man dam but the other opinion that says, that this wood that's forbidden to have any benefits from is not saved. But Damnida, it is saved. They do save this blood. Why, what do they save it for? Lashonra. They feed it to the cat. Vi'idach. What do the other opinion hold if this is cat food? So what does he say? Kivan the Chalsa Very interesting. It says, that if a cat eats the blood, this menstrual blood, it makes the woman weak. So therefore, you don't feed it to the cat. 
that's one pshat. I have on the side of my, my Gemara another pshat over here. The Dam Nida, the Kotzer Ramban, in Bayekri Yud Ches. I guess that's a uh, Metzora. Um, says that the Dam Nida, anyone that uh, drinks it, any animal that drinks it will die. According to that Ramban, what it means is that it will make the cat weak. Not the woman weak, make the cat weak. I'm a Rabbi Yisro Barchanina. Rabbi Yisro Barchanina says, "Hide like Rabbi Shimon." This doesn't go like Rabbi Shimon. Like Rabbi Shimon, I'm a Leiyam a Kol Shirim a Lalo Lamas Niyayim. He says, that Rabbi Shimon holds that that it works by the individual. There is no set rules. Um, if this is what a person does, then that's what he uh, that's what he's going to be chayev for. If he if not, then um, then uh, he'll be potter for that. Okay, let's leave it over here.